Hey, welcome back this week. Like I said last week, we're going to stop the reviews for until the finals are over. And we're just going to focus on certain topics. This week, we're doing pass interference. Now, as with typical NFHS fashion, the rule book's pretty vague. It does not give a whole lot of specifics on what they want you to call. Uh, if you look at 7510, it just simply says it is not for it. Is, I'm sorry. It is for pass interference. If any player of A or B who was believed who is beyond the neutral zone interferes with an eligible opponent's opportunity to move toward catch or bat the pass. Let me get that 7510. Pretty vague. Not a whole lot of stuff. Just tells you if they interfere with their ability to catch it. What we have done, we have developed categories of DPI, and these have been um, kind of I won't say debated, but these have been developed over the past few years, several years. Uh, I've seen these ever since I've been calling over a decade ago. So these are kind of accepted. They've appeared in Referee Magazine. These are in manuals. So these, it used to be P.F. Chang, like the popular Chinese restaurant. That's great. Uh, a few years ago, face guarding was eliminated from the Federation rule book. So instead of P.F. Chang, now you just got P. Chang. But there they are. They're playing through the back, cut off, hook and turn, arm bar, not playing the ball, and grabbing and restricting. Uh, grab and restrict, which is just, and we got little, um, just a brief kind of idea of what it is after. So playing through the back, that is kind of like just contact before the ball arrives. You see those, a lot of curls, uh, receiver, different curl route. DB will come and just go right through his back, try to get to the ball. Cut off, you see that a lot on like post routes and stuff like that, flies, where the DB just kind of runs in front of the receiver and cuts his ball and cuts, you know, like it says, cuts off his route or path to the ball. Um, obviously, they do this when they're not looking at the ball, they're not really playing the ball. They just go look at the receiver and just cut their path off. Hook and turn the important thing about hook and turn is you have to have the hook. And the turn, that's the DB is going to hook the receiver around the waist with his arm. Then he's going to turn his body away from the ball. They usually do this when they're bringing their arm over the shoulder. Try to swat the ball away. You'll see that. Again, these are like on curls and sit routes. You'll see that hook and turn. Arm bar, again, usually a post or fly route. That uh, DB will just put his arm across the receiver's body, which kind of restricts him. See this a lot if you have a fast receiver and a not-so-fast DB. Or receiver is just a lot faster than a DB. DB will try the arm bar so he can try to stay running side by side with them. Of course, they're not playing the ball. This is probably the most common one. You see this all the time. Uh, what I don't like, I don't like officials using this as like kind of like a catch-all. I couldn't really put it in a category, so I just said not playing the ball. But a lot of times this is when the contact's made on the receiver before the ball gets there. Typically when the DB's back is to the ball. This is kind of replaced face guarding. Because you saw face guarding was a non-contact foul. That's just literally where the DB would kind of put their hands up and guard the receiver's face. Uh, you still can have something like that. But now it's more that similar play. But... If the, the DB makes contact with the receiver and that contact restricts the receiver's ability to catch the ball. So a lot of times you'll have the DB, his back is to the ball, the receiver's facing the ball and the quarterback, the receiver will jump up in the air to catch it. And that DB is just going to push him before the ball gets there. That is not playing the ball. And then the last one, I hope you can see it on the screen, grab and restrict. And that's just like it says, there's some restrictive grabbing, uh, restrictive contact before the ball arrives. This would be typically when you have defensive holding that turns into DPI, it's typically a grab and restrict category. The important thing is, now remember for DPI, if you cannot put the contact in any one of these categories and clearly put it in that category, then you don't have DPI. You have to be able to clearly and unequivocally put the contact in one of these categories. Now we do have offensive pass interference. DBs, safeties, cornerbacks are not the only ones who can commit pass interference. A wide receiver, offensive player can as well. And we only have three of those. Blocking downfield, picks, initiating contact and creating separation, and driving through the defender. I put blocking downfield and picks in the same category because usually 
that's what it's going to be. It's going to be, they're going to set that pick. And then it's also important to know that there are things that are not pass interference. The book, the rule book gives you some that are by rule, not pass interference in 7511. And that's there's unavoidable contact occurs when two or more eligibles make a simultaneous bona fide attempt, attempt to catch the ball. Uh, if contact by A is immediately made on a B lineman, the contact does not continue beyond the expanded neutral zone. And then a contact by B is if it's away from the pass. Those are things that are in the rule book that are not pass interference. These are kind of things that just don't fall in that category, but you may see some. Incidental contact, we sometimes, uh, that's kind of the chicken fighting we see what we call chicken fighting tangled feet is one of those that it really trips up no pun intended a lot of officials because it looks bad and it's usually in the middle of the field usually right when the pass is being thrown it looks bad everyone thinks it's pass interference but it is not tangled feet that falls under incidental contact you also say it falls on unavoidable contact uh, which is 7511a also contact does not restrict Again, that's kind of what we call chicken fighting. That's just they're kind of going downfield, hitting their hands, or pushing on each other. But none of it really knocks the receiver off his course or knocks the DB off his course. Then that wouldn't be restrictive contact. And then by rule, a pass that does not cross the line of scrimmage, that as well is not pass interference. So let's look at some plays and kind of see, uh, kind of get a good idea and see things that may that are or are not pass interference all right so let's look at the first play and mostly we're going to focus plays we'll look at focusing more on things that are not dpi i can show you plays that are dpi all day and we can debate it basically the thing with dpi can't put in a category it's not dpi i think you learn more by seeing things that are not dpi and we're going to look at both <clears throat> mostly some things that are not dpi the first one is like i said by rule not DPI, pass it doesn't go beyond the line of scrimmage. So here, the contact, everything, the contact is going to be behind the line of scrimmage, pass it behind the line of scrimmage, and he just bumps him off his route. This is not DPI. It's nothing. You know, the most you can have on a pass that doesn't go behind the line of scrimmage is holding, and for holding, really pretty much have to see um, a tackle. They pretty much have to tackle them for holding. So, you know, he bumps them off the route like that behind the line of scrimmage. It's not, not pass interference. Again, that's in the rule book, 7511, uh, 7511A, maybe, maybe it's B. But it's not pass interference. Any kind of contact on the pass behind the line of scrimmage. Again, most you have is holding, but that for holding, pretty much he has to tackle him. So here's another one. This is not DPI. We talked about contact that just does not restrict the route. And this is a prime example. This, and this is really good just kind of chicken fighting. They're both kind of shoving on each other. No one's knocked off their route. The receiver's not, not knocked off his route. The DB, his stride isn't incurred. And the ball just kind of falls there harmlessly. Good call. No DPI. You can't put that in a category. I mean, there's nothing. There's no category to put that in. He's not grabbing his arm. He's not grabbing his trick. He's not really grabbing. Uh, there's no there's no separation created by the receiver. Just it's just nothing. Now one of the things we talked about that's not DPI, and that's feet being tangled. This is an example. This is it looks bad. It looks like it's one of those wide open plays. Get receiver falling down out there in the open. Everyone's going to be yelling for pass interference. Why isn't this pass interference? Just feet get tangled, some unavoidable contact. Everyone, DB, receiver, everyone's looking at the ball. Everyone has a right to the ball. Feet just get tangled. It's just a loud non foul. That's all that is. Um, and again, one thing you know that it's not because everyone's looking toward the ball. There's no obvious intent to impede. He just trips over, you know. Strips over each other's feet. Nothing there. Again, same thing. 
Defender falls down. He's not. He's looking back toward the ball. Defender falls down. Happens to fall into the receiver. Receiver still had a chance to make a play on this too. And again, like I said, you can look. All this is incidental. Receivers, the uh, defender's looking back. He doesn't know what's going on. He just falls. Receiver falls over him. No DPI. It's a good no call. It happens. Incidental. You can't put that in a category. So we don't have DPI. Now this is a different situation. This you probably he's probably gonna claim his feet are tangled, but look what he does. He takes a concentrated shot. He just dove right at his feet. And this one, one of the one of the giveaways is he's looking straight at the receiver. He's not looking back toward the ball. He's not making a bona fide attempt on the pal on the on the on the play, the pass. He just dives straight at the receiver's feet, knocks him off, ball lands pretty close to the receiver. So this would be pass interference. If you if you know that he did it on purpose, that wasn't just incidental contact, you know it, and you can like I said, you can tell the signs here. He's not looking at it and he doesn't trip and fall, he just dives on his own. That would be pass interference. There's another one that falls under the category of grab and restrict. So you say you can put this clearly, definely in a category. He grabs and restricts. There it is. Grabs and restricts. And the reason I show the reason I show this play is because this ball is way over the head. It lands. You know this. You will hear a lot of coaches and maybe even some officials, unfortunately, say uncatchable pass. We don't have that rule in Fed. In high school, there's no such thing as an uncatchable pass. If there's contact that restricts the receiver, then you have a foul. Even in NCAA where they do have uncatchable pass, it has to be, you know, obviously egregiously uncatchable. I don't, I don't think this would even fall in the category of uncatchable in NCAA. It's got to be egregious, especially because they're dealing with a lot of good athletes. So we don't have uncatchable pass. Now, obviously, use some common sense. If the QB throws this through the uprights, um, you know, use some common sense. That's all I can say. But we do not have uncatchable pass. And again, you can clearly put this in a category. So you would have DPI on this play. Last thing we're going to look at is OPI. Now, remember, OPI still has to be beyond the line of scrimmage. If it's behind the line of scrimmage, then... Behind the line of scrimmage is for all pass interference by A or B. So if the pass is behind the line of scrimmage, you don't have OPI no matter what. So I show this though because I want to talk through and just kind of kind of go over what we would do in this situation. First of all, if we would have a foul, this is an obvious pick situation. And how you can tell, he is not running a route. Ball snapped. He's looking straight at this defender. He's not thinking about a route. He's not doing anything else. He's looking straight at that defender. And he goes straight at him, interferes with him, and then he stops. He stops. He doesn't keep running a route. Because a lot of times you'll hear the excuse, well, he was running his route, the defender got in his way. And that's a valid argument if it's true. But this is not the case. Ball snapped. He looks straight at this DB, runs straight at him. After he makes a contact, he stops. And then we have a completed catch. So, properly officiated. Um, let's see who's outside receiver, outside receiver. So, field judge, you're going to throw the flag deep. Whoever, whoever it may be, you're going to throw your flag on this play. Then we, we get together, the deep and the wing, they get together. And the question comes up is, was it behind the line of scrimmage? And that's the question we have to talk about. If this is in the neutral zone, no big deal. We wave it off. If it's beyond the neutral zone, we have a we have a we have pass interference, offensive pass interference. But that is how we do. We still want to throw the flag, and then talk to your wing. And the wing and the deep talk to each other first, then report to the R. And you just say, "We got wave it off." Uh, behind the line of scrimmage, 
or you report the foul, pass interference on the offense. That's how you would officially, uh, correctly officiate that play. So that's it. That's it for this for this week. Hope you had. A, hope you learned a lot. I hope you hope this clears some things up. If you have questions, you know how to contact us. Please take this into your game and you know kind of think about it. And again, just main thing, like I said, if you can't clearly put it in a category, then you don't have pass interference. So remember to like and subscribe us. If you like this video, like it. If you don't like this video, other button works too. Thanks.